Patrick Dermott in here, MC, capital D E R M O C M O T T, and the mayor of the city of Hammond. First off, I want to thank the members of the IURC for coming to Hammond. I know it's not very often they're coming here, and uh, we're now the largest city in Lake County, and I know that's why we're chosen, so thank you very much for coming here. Uh, it's a I'm here, I want to make it clear that I'm here on, as a citizen, not as the mayor of the city of Hammond. And I think it's appropriate to point out because the city of Hammond is a party in this case, and I don't want to have any objections to uh, my participation, so I'm here right now as a citizen to sort of explain why I think it's important for people to show up to Hammond High School, come up here and speak to the members of the IURC. Um, as we all know, NIPSCO has requested an 8% rate increase in this case. Mayor, I can slow down a little bit on oh, our report. report. Thank you. I've uh, heard that one before. <laughs> um, NIPSCO is requesting an eight percent rate increase in what is the second request before the IURC. Uh, as we all know, a little over a year ago, NIPSCO had another case that was pending before you all uh, that ended up a, a favorable return for NIPSCO, and it was granted a seventeen percent rate increase at the time. NIPSCO. Uh, Back off of that original rate request and filed this new rate request. One thing that's been consistent between both uh, cases before the IURC has been the city and its participation. Um, I don't know how common it is for a city to get involved in a rate increase, but I just feel, as the mayor of the fifth largest city in Indiana, uh, the largest city in Nipsco service territory, I feel uh, a sense of responsibility as the mayor of it when I think um, citizens are being faced with. Uh, dire alternatives that it's time for the city to step up. Um, since I've been mayor, I've been mayor for eight years now. Uh, I've been mayor, Governor Daniels took over uh, in 2000, 2006, excuse me, and, uh, no, excuse me, 2005, Governor Daniels took over. And one thing that I've noticed has been very consistent over the last eight years in Indiana government has been uh, forcing government to get more efficient, forcing government to downsize, eliminating redundancies, um, and I know that all five members of the IURC were appointed by Governor Daniels, so what I would ask you to do is, you know, follow consistency with NIPSCO, the same consistency you would follow with Hammond, Indiana. If Hammond, Indiana approached Governor Daniels and, you know, anybody in the General Assembly and asked for a 17% tax increase, we would be literally laughed out of the General Assembly. We'd be literally laughed out of the governor's office. If I approached the same people and asked for an 8% property tax increase, we would be laughed out of the place. I would be forced to prove why I needed that increase. I'd be forced to prove what we've done to prevent any, every alternative before we asked for that rate increase. And we'd probably still be turned down at the end of the day. When NIPSCO's first case went through the IORC and the 17% rate increase was awarded, it was, in all fairness, it was around 17%, and it depended on the different classifications, in all fairness. But the fact is, I couldn't understand how, on one hand, government, you know, police officers are being laid off across Indiana right now. Firemen are being laid off across Indiana right now. Public education is literally losing millions of dollars. Teachers being faced with loss of benefits, loss of jobs. Um, how can we hold government to one standard? And then NIPSCO, a utility that's licensed to practice through you all, approaches you and asks for in, in effect, with a tax increase, although it's a rate that we pay to NIPSCO, it's a tax. Mrs. Austin doesn't have a choice whether or not she wants her lights turned on or not. Mrs. Austin has to pay that bill. We may not call it a tax, we call it a payment to NIPSCO, but that's a tax where I come from. And what they're asking for is now a more palpable 8% rate increase. I don't think that NIPSCO has done what they need to do to prove they need that rate increase. I don't think NIPSCO has done what local government has been forced to do, which is cut the fat, cut the fat, cut the fat, cut the fat. Every year, cut the fat. Why is it that NIPSCO can approach five members appointed by the governor and get a gift of 17% or, in this case, 8%, and local government is forced to, to slash to the bone? I just don't understand the inconsistency. And it's frustrating for me because I know that all five of you are appointed by the governor. And I know that the governor feels very strongly about efficiencies and, and lowering the tax burden on people. And I would just ask you to, you know, to listen to the advice of the person that appointed you. <laughs> to, to force NIPSCO to do what Hammond, Indiana has had to do. That's all I'm asking for is treat us fairly. The unfortunate victims in this are the hundreds of people that poured out in Hammond High School on a Thursday night to testify to a state agency. I mean, 
All I'm asking for is consistency. And that's why it frustrates me when I hear NIPSCO is being nice by only asking for an 8% rate increase. If Hammond, Indiana asked for an 8% tax increase, we would get summarily rejected in NIPSCO. I hope they get treated the same way. So um, I'm available to answer any questions, but I just want you to look around this room. There's a lot of people in here that are hurting. The service territory in NIPSCO probably has over 10% unemployment rate. Right? Maybe even more in certain pockets. And these people are being forced to pay an extra 8%. The burden's on you. The decision's up to you. So um, anyway, I just wanted to get that off my chest. I want to thank you all for coming out to Hammond, Indiana. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm here to entertain them. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Thank you.